Right. Do you know what time it is? It's eruption time. So I'm going to teach you everything you could ever hope and dream to know about tooth eruption times. And you're probably thinking, hey, dude, listen, the only dreams I'm having about this stuff are nightmares. So my goal for you by the end of this video is that you can answer any type of question that's thrown at you on the board exam that concerns eruption time. So on this lecture, I'm kind of assuming that you know some of something about the, the when, when the teeth erupt. And so um, what I've done is I've got two pictures that I've drawn up that are really important that if you memorize these pictures, uh, then when you go into the exam, you can write it down, you can draw it out on your whiteboard and have it as a reference. And it's very, very helpful to have these things. So I've got a chart written up, a drawing for primary dentition eruption times and permanent dentition eruption times. So you got to do a little legwork on your side in memorizing these numbers. And I recommend that you get a piece of paper out and that you write these pictures down, that you draw these pictures out. So we'll start on the primary dentition. And I'm not necessarily going to go through uh, each, like the time frame for each tooth, because I'm kind of assuming that you have studied that already and you have a good handle on that. But if you'd like to, you can pause the video and look through those. So I'm going to go through um, a couple different types of questions that uh, this drawing will help you with. Eruption sequence. So if you look here, the eruption sequence is going to start with centrals, laterals. We're going to skip to the first molar. And then we're going to go back to the canine. And then the second molar. Uh, the last primary tooth to erupt is going to be the maxillary second molar. And so that would be like a multiple choice type of question. Okay, the first primary tooth to erupt, the first primary teeth to erupt are the mandibular right and left central incisors right down below. And then around one year, a child is expected to have erupted the primary, maxillary, and mandibular incisors, and the first molars. So you get this type of question a lot, you know, at, at a certain age, which teeth does this child have? So at one year, you, know, you come along here, and you see that this is under a year. So we're going to have the centrals, we're going to have the laterals, we're going to have the first molars. Okay, and here's another variation on that. A parent notices a new primary tooth at 12 months. Now, what tooth is this most likely? And then I have like a whole bunch of teeth for you to choose from. Most likely it would be the mandibular first molar, the 12 month molar. And then the primary second molars are expected to erupt around the child's second birthday. Okay, we're gonna move on to the rule of four. So this is a quick and dirty way to keep track of which teeth are coming up and when they're coming up for the primary dentition. So it's called the rule of four because you're going to have eruption of four teeth every four months. So this is kind of the, the system or the model that we're using. Every four months we're adding four teeth. And the age that we start at is going to be seven months. Okay, so I made this little chart up. So we start at seven months. And it's every four months, so we go 7, 11, 15, etc. And it's the rule of four, so we just add four teeth on. Okay, And you can see over here the teeth that we start off with are the, the centrals, mandibular and maxillary. And then we add on the laterals, so that's another four. And then we're going to add on the first molars at 12 months. At 15, sorry. And then we're going to add on the canines, and then we're going to add on the second molars. So this is kind of a nice, quick way to keep track of what's happening on the primary dentition. Okay, permanent dentition eruption times. So 
Just a quick word about this drawing. You'll notice uh, right here, I want you to pay special attention to these premolars. See down here, these cusps are, I drew them pretty equal here in length. Uh, and here I purposely made these uneven. Okay, and so if you look at my little note here, I just want you to remember that the second premolar's mesial cusp slope is shorter than the distal cusp slope. So that's kind of the exception right there. So that's why I drew it kind of off kilter like that. And I made this little note. Some ranges on the teeth eruption are going to vary among study materials, maybe by like a year or so. But um, this is the way I studied it, and um, this is the way... I recommend that you look through it. Okay, so this would be a good time for you to kind of pause the video and take a look through this, really digest it, be able to draw it out. Okay, three cardinal eruption rules. Girls' teeth erupts before boys. The mandibulars generally erupt before maxillaries, and the teeth of slender kids erupt before those larger kids. So to remember that, I want you to think that since the kids are bigger, there's a lot more tissue to get through. So it takes a little more time. Okay, we're moving on to the category of eruption. So I don't want you to confuse eruption with exfoliation. Okay, so what might happen is they have, on the exam, you might have uh, the definition of eruption. And it might... You know, ask you to define the, in the define it in the answer, and exfoliation would be in there. So don't pick exfoliation for that. And um, here's a little rule: the permanent teeth begin to form at four months in utero, and that's going to be the mandibular first molar, which makes sense, right? Because it's the first permanent tooth to erupt. Here's another one that's really important not to get tricked on. Oftentimes you'll see this come up. What's the first succedaneous tooth to erupt? And um, it's the mandibular central incisor at six to seven years old. Don't get tricked and pick the first molar thinking, well, that's the first permanent tooth to erupt. It's not succedaneous because it does not replace a primary tooth. So it's not succedaneous. Okay, the follicles of developing permanent incisors are in a position lingual to the deciduous roots. So when you've got the primary teeth and you've got the permanent teeth coming in, they're gonna erupt lingual to the primary dentition. And so to remember that, I want you to think that when you see a kid walking around, you don't see them with a bunch of bumps on the front of their gums because they're not erupting buckly, they're erupting lingually which means when a tooth is partially resorbed by the developing tooth underneath it, the facial part of the tooth is gonna be longer and most securely attached to the gingiva. And the first evidence of root resorption on a primary incisor is seen on the lingual root surface. So you see these are just kind of different ways that this concept can be tested. Okay, moving on to calcification. So maxillary and mandibular first molars begin to calcify at birth. And remember, they begin to form at four months in utero. Initiation of calcification for the mandibular central incisors is three to four months. So here we've got the first molars. Those are going to calcify at birth. The central incisors, the mandibular central incisors, are going to calcify at three to four months. And then the permanent third molars begin to calcify at eight to ten years of age. Okay, root formation. This is just kind of like a general rule for you. I wrote it out real simple here, and then on the next slide, we're going to go through kind of some of the tricky ways that you use, tricky wording you might see on the exam. So at eruption, you're going to have 50% of your roots formed. And then um, two to three years after eruption, you're going to have 100% of the root formed. Okay, so here's some of the 
ways that they can tweak that concept to make it a little more confusing. Active eruption of the teeth occurs after half of the root is formed. The tooth makes its appearance in the mouth when one half of the root is complete. 50% of root calcification is complete at the time of eruption. And the apex is usually fully developed by two to three years after eruption. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what's what teeth are generally present at six years of old of age, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So at six years of age, uh, you're going to have twenty primary teeth and four permanent first molars. So the first sign of a mixed dentition is generally six years of age when they get those mandibular molars coming in. And remember, those are not sexadaneous teeth. And ordin ordinarily, a six-year-old would have the following teeth clinically available, all primary teeth and the permanent first molars. Seven years old. So you're going to have... And notice, just like a quick note, I... I didn't put like the mixed dentition, so this is not exactly what teeth are going to be available at six years of age. I just put it up here just to kind of help you follow along. So moving on to seven years old, you're going to have 18 primary teeth and six permanent teeth. So you're going to have four permanent molars. And if you come to this chart, and remember it's seven years of age, by seven will probably have lost this tooth. We'll, we'll have gained this tooth, uh, lost it in the primary dentition. And so we're going to have the molars. We're going to have four molars, four first molars, and we're going to have two mandibular permanent central incisors. At eight years of age, uh, the teeth normally present are going to be so you can come down here and take a look. We're going to have the first molars. We're going to have the permanent central incisors. We're going to have the lateral incisors. And we're going to have, we're not going to have these coming in yet. So we're going to have the primary canines. And these have not come in yet. Because this is older than eight, eight. And so we're going to have the first and second primary molar. So that's another way that this chart is very helpful is if they ask you an age, you know, in which teeth are present, you can kind of come here and use this chart in that way. And here's another little fun fact. The permanent maxillary first molar, so let's find that tooth. So we're on the maxillary first molar. At this age, at eight years of age, this tooth has no distal contact. Um, it does have a mesial contact. And the mesial contact would be with the primary second molar. But notice it would not have a distal contact. It wouldn't have the second molar here because that doesn't come until they're 12. Okay, nine years of age. How many teeth are we going to have? So we're going to have 12 primary teeth remaining in the mouth. So if you come to nine, we've got these coming in. We've got these coming in. We still have our primary canines and we still have two molars per quadrant and there's four quadrants and so that would make 12 teeth 12 primary teeth at 10 years of age the permanent teeth expected are going to be the central incisors so 10 by 10 these have come in the lateral, lateral incisors, the first premolars, and the first molars, and the mandibular canine. And then one would expect the root of the permanent molars, the first molars, to be finished forming and calcifying. Because remember that happens two to three years after eruption. And so at six years, you know, the six-year molars, by 10, that's two to three years after. And so this is another way that you can use this chart if you kind of keep that rule of thumb in mind. 
Okay, here's uh, quiz time. So I put up a couple different questions on here. I've got all the answers on the next slide. And so what I want you to do is pause the video, uh, read through these questions, and see how you do. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to go to the next slide now. So you can kind of go through those, see how you did. And this right here is just kind of like a master chart of everything that I've gone through. We've got you know, the age over here. We've got the range. We've got the maxillary and the mandibular. And then calcification times, root completion times, and enamel completion. I don't recommend that you kill yourself on this stuff. Um, just kind of no generalizations and then you'll be good on this. So um, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Um, if you feel like the video helped you out, uh, please like the video. And um, thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.